we wouldn't actually enter an invoice. We would do it with journal entries, just like we are doing here, because we want to be able to, to see it as an adjusting entry. So let's do that now. It's going to be on 228, 228. And so the normal invoice kind of journal entry would be accounts receivable. Accounts receivable would be impacted. And then we would have the sales tax payable. So the sales tax payable, which we have, we're going to have to deal with another complication, which is why we want to deal with inventory so we can deal with that complication of having to do the sales tax, which would also be impacted. And then the sales number down here, which would be impacted. And then we'd also have the cost of goods sold, cost of goods sold and the inventory. So this is our normal kind of transaction if we're tracking inventory and having to deal with sales tax on a perpetual inventory method. I'm going to hit the indent here and these two are going to be indented up top. And then we're going to pick up the amount we're going to say, and this would be supported by the subledger. Now note, if I go all the way to the subledger on the right hand side, we also kind of want to consider what's going to happen with all these subledgers because now I'm dealing with accounts receivable and I'm dealing with, with inventory. So if I go over here, we're selling, I think an ELP, it's going to be an ELP. So you might say, well, then I should adjust the subledger. And you could, you could adjust the subledger if you're reporting it. But really what I'd like to do is not mess up the subledger, not touch the subledger. Cause I don't, again, I don't want it to mess up the behind the scenes stuff that's happening in the QuickBooks system. I don't, I would like to not have QuickBooks or whatever the accounting system they are using to have to see my adjusting entry and reversing entry in the subledger because that's going to be confusing to them. So what I'd like to do if possible is to note it as, as just an adjusting entry, not have to post it to the subledger and, and then reverse it so that we'll be back in balance subledger tying out to, to the trial balance after the reversal has happened so that my adjustment doesn't mess them up on the subledger. So let, but we're going to be imagining that we're selling this 400, this $400 ELP. So I'm not going to adjust the subledger this time. We're going to keep that in mind as we look at the reversing entry and what's going to happen with the subledger though. And I'm going to say that this is going to be 400 cost of goods. The other side's going to inventory. And then we've got the, the sales, which we're going to just say is 500. The sales not being related to the sub, to that sub ledger because the sales price might be a markup from the cost of goods sold, but it's going to be a different for, than the cost. We're going to imagine that the sales tax is a generic 5%. So 500 times 0.05 would be the sales tax. That means the accounts receivable would be the negative sum of, of these items, the plug number that we would be getting from the 525. We could, of course, match this out to the 